This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is brought to you by Starboy's Juices. Infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Refreshing and nutritious. Call Starboys at 1267 904 3454. That's 1267 904 3454. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. Football, cricket, athletics, netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sports City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sports City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sports City right now. If you guys can hear me, just hit the like button. It's as simple as that. If you can hear me, just hit the like button. How does that sound? Does that sound okay? <laughs> so with that being said, how is everybody doing? So let's talk now. Good evening, everybody. I'm Simon Preston and welcome to Reggae Boys Commentary. So let's get right into the matter, shall we? If you guys haven't already, please hit the like button. And after you hit the like button, you hit the subscribe button to Reggae Boys Commentary. Okay, guys, it's a pleasure to be able to catch up with you guys. And I hope everybody had a pleasant weekend and recharged your batteries ahead of the week ahead. And I will go on and say month ahead. Yeah, May. And... We are approaching almost, almost the halfway stage of 2023. Can you believe that? Yeah, almost the halfway stage of 2023. Man, the time is, goes by so quickly, doesn't it? Very much so. I'm sure you guys would recall, would remember things that would have happened five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I'm sure many of you have those sorts of memories locked in your brain quite vividly you know so with that being said let's get into the discussion shall we and to everyone that has liked that has subscribed much appreciated very much so much appreciated onil durant in the comments says big up simon big up how are you all is well how are you how is the family doing how are things let me know as Ab says, hey, Simon, you good? I am doing well, my friend. I hope you are also doing quite well. Yep, certainly hoping you guys are doing 
well too. Do let me know if you can hear me. Wayne Carnegie says, bless up, mute. Bless up, Wayne Carnegie. How are you? All is well? I'm speaking into the microphone right now. So that should mean that all is well. Yeah. That should mean that all is well. Yeah. There we go. So that should give us everything that we need there. Good. So I'm speaking into the microphone now, and that should be good. Wayne Carnegie says he's marking papers for Edna Manley. You're a lecturer at Edna Manley? Hmm. I did not know that. I didn't know that at all. I genuinely didn't know that. I. Okay. All is well. Okay. Okay, I, as I understand, there's more games to go. And I know Somalian football will make the strides and make the improvement that it will. It's just only a matter of time. So that's what I'll say there. So Wayne Carnegie, IS Abs, O'Neill Durant, everyone that has commented, liked, hit the subscribe button within the past six minutes or so. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to talk about something this evening, and it's in relation to the process that we have in terms of documentation. Now, I'm sure everyone would agree that being a Jamaican citizen is an absolute privilege, very much so. And everybody would see that. Breaking top three, meaning qualifying for the next World Cup, yes, yes, for sure. Now, speaking in relation to what I'm referring to now, Jamaicans have made an impact all over the globe, haven't they? Let's start in our sort of avenue. Brown Bear, how are you? So Jamaicans have made an impact everywhere, everywhere. In our region in particular, Jamaicans played an important role in the developing of the Panama Canal. After developing the Panama Canal, the Jamaicans were heroes. Many of them stayed in Panama, and some moved west to Costa Rica and settled in a place called Limon. And you know who who is the grandchildren and great-grandchildren today? Joel Campbell, Paula Wanchop, Kendall Waston, Eric Lonis, William Sonsing, and many others. Let's go to the United States. Yeah? I mean, everyone knows the obvious examples of Kamala Harris and Colin Powell. But Jamaicans have had a deeper imprint on the United States and Canada. And everybody's fully aware about that. After the Second World War, many Jamaicans... This is before Windrush. After the Second World War, many Jamaicans decided to fight and rebuild England. And that is exactly what was done. And guess what? They stayed. They stayed after helping rebuild the country. Many of these people now are maybe in their 90s, late 90s, early 90s, 80s, 70-year-olds. May, many of those in those, those certain age brackets. It's it's compelling to think that Windrush was 75 years ago. <laughs> you know? Quite compelling to think that. So what is the point? Many of those footballers that play or were born in England today, born to Jamaican parents or grandparents. And many of those who are eligible through grandparents played an important role in developing the country. Ashton Golding, Jamaica's captain of Jamaica's rugby league team at the World Cup last year. His grandfather played an important role in the construction of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway, straight out of Jamaica. A Jamaican, the engineer of the project for the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. Yeah. Theo Walcott's dad, Kyle Walker's dad, Kieran Trippier's dad, Ashley Cole's dad, Saul Campbell's dad, all of these men and others, an important role in re 
developing England. Now, the man that we're speaking about in this video in particular, where McCullum says top three in CONCACAF, yes, yes, absolutely. We're going for number one, though. So the young man that we're referring to or speaking about right now, his name is Archibald Brown. Goes by the name Archie Brown. Archie Brown is a 20-year-old defender. He was born in Birmingham, England. So the way that he talks is with a Birmingham accent like Jack Grealish and Darren Moore. That's the way that people did talk in those sorts of areas. So when you hear Cameron Eubank and O'Shea Ellis and, and Cuba Mitchell, you hear them with that Birmingham rummy accent because they're from the Midlands of England. So they talk with that sort of accent, really. So Archie Brown, he's 20 years old. He's six foot three. He was born in Birmingham, England. How does he qualify to play for Jamaica? Well, he qualifies to play for Jamaica through his grandparents. That's right, his grandparents. So his father's parents were born in Jamaica. So his father's father and his father's mother were both born in Jamaica. So that is how Archie Brown is eligible to represent Jamaica. Before we get a little bit deeper, into things. Let's just give you a little background about Archie. Now, Archie began his youth career at Derby County, and he helped them to win their the youth top flight title 20, not too long ago. And by, by the success that he garnered at Derby County, he attracted interest. And this interest was attracted over in Switzerland. A brave decision. So, for the past two years, he has been in Switzerland. That's right. He plays for Lausanne Sport in Switzerland. Lausanne Sport, or known as FC Lausanne Sport, they play in the Swiss Challenge League. That's the division that they play right now within Switzerland. And currently, within the Swiss Challenge League, Lausanne are second in the league. What does that mean? Well, by being in the top two, it means that they are in line for, that's right, promotion to the Swiss Super League. And Archie Brown has played an important role in that aspect. He's gotten minutes under his belt, he's played 30 odd times, and he scored a goal even over the weekend. His six foot three inch presence paying dividends for Lausanne Sport. This is a club with history. They were founded in 1896, which means they're 127 years old. They've won the Swiss Cup nine times. They've been runners up of the Swiss League Cup once. They've won the National League on seven occasions. So they're a club with trophies. They're a club with pedigree. They're a club with an acumen for success. Unfortunate that last season they were relegated, but now they're on the cusp of promotion towards the Swiss Super League. And when they plan on going up, they plan to not only stay there, but they plan to be champions. That's the intention that they have, especially under former Swiss player and now manager Ludovic Magnin. Yeah, many people would remember him from his time playing for Switzerland at the 2004 Euros, the 2006 World Cup, 2008 Euros, and even the 2010 World Cup. Those of you German football fans would remember him quite well at Werder Bremen. And and just a tidbit, the, Germer, the Germans that actually came to Jamaica came from Bremen. The Germans that actually came to Jamaica came from the town of Bremen. That's where they sailed from to come to Jamaica and settle in what is now German town, Seaford town. So back to Archie. Why, why are we discussing Archibald Gordon, Archibald Brown? Well, here's the thing with Archie Brown. Now, Archie Brown is 20 and he has a Jamaican granddad. What is Archie Brown going to do? So the season for Archie ends in the month of May. That's a month from now. What does Archie plan to do? 
Archie out of his intuition, out of his love for country, will be flying into Jamaica in June and he will be proceeding to the Passport Immigration Citizenship Agency on Waterloo Road in St. Andrew to commence his process to apply for Jamaican citizenship. And after that, a Jamaican passport. The process to get Jamaican citizenship is around 15 working days. And after he receives his Jamaican citizenship, he can immediately go to Constant Spring Road and apply for Jamaican passport. When you apply for a Jamaican passport, you have varying options. You can apply for your Jamaican passport for it to expedite it where you get it the same day. You can expedite it for it for you to get it the next day. You can even expedite it to get it three days, three working days, or seven working days. So those are the process once it comes to the passport stage that you have those options to expedite it. Yes, it's more expensive the quicker you want it, same day is a little over 100 US dollars, you know, but I'm just sharing with you the steps that Archie wants to get a Jamaican passport. He's aware that the competition for places is absolutely strong, stiff, a lot of depth. But I think it's absolutely fantastic when you have persons that go out of their way, get some help when they need, and sort out what they have to do. Now, one of my brothers told me this in 2021, and I'm going to repeat it to you. There's a saying in life that says, better to have it than not have it. So, he's an adult, he's 20, so he would have a Jamaican passport for 10 years before needing to renew it. Now, who knows where Archie could develop to as a player? Who knows if he could make a return back to England based on the expeditious performances that he's putting in currently in Switzerland? Who knows? But one thing for sure is this. Having a Jamaican passport is a privilege. Having a Jamaican passport makes you strong. Having a Jamaican passport makes you powerful. Having a Jamaican passport makes you good. Jeremy Chambers, how are you? Hope you're doing good. Maria Victoria Cespedes Ortiz. Hola, buenas noches. ¿Cómo estás? He is a central defender. Archibald Brown is a central defender. And he's a goal-scoring central defender, might I add. He is a goal-scoring central defender. So that you guys are aware. Archie is very much that sort of character. MPEG TV says, greetings. Greetings, MPEG. How are you? Randy Bless says, bless up, Simon. Hey, Randy. How are you? All is well? So this is to inform that Archie is going to start his process when he arrives on the island in June. He will be coming to Jamaica. He'll be going to the Topeka on Waterloo Road to get a citizenship. The citizenship is, the, is, I would say, the most tedious slash arduous process because it's a process that takes 15 working days. And when you think about 15 working days, Monday to Friday, that's three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Monday to Friday is five working days. Monday to Friday again, that's 10 working days. And Monday to Friday again, that's 15 working days. So that's three weeks. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, as you know, the process is to get the passport itself. So, now, the situation with citizenship. So, I'm just going to give an example. Now, let's say for an example that you have a, an individual and he was born in England and his father was born in Jamaica. His father has died, but his father was born in Jamaica. Can he still represent Jamaica? Yes, his father doesn't have to be alive for him to represent Jamaica. Doesn't have to be alive. He can still represent Jamaica even if his father is not alive. What would need to happen is that he would need his father's birth certificate. 
he would need his personal birth certificate and he would need to get two passport pictures signed, notarized by JP. And in addition to that process as well, is that he would have to get a form of declaration signed, which means that he would have to find somebody who is seven years older than his father to know that he knew his father and that he was a Jamaican. Essentially, that's what the situation is, so that you guys are fully aware with everything. Yes, good evening to everybody that has tuned in. I appreciate it greatly. Very much so, very grateful to everybody eh, who have liked the video, who have also commented in the chat as well. I will continue and reiterate that nothing happens before it's time. Everything falls into place in due time. And it's a, a mantra that I believe in, and I know that you guys believe in as well. So with all of that being said now, I want you to know and be aware of the situation as well. So some people might say, Simon, what about players that don't have a relationship with their father? Well, before I answer that question, I want to say this. To all the men out there watching this video, all men across the globe, all Jamaican men, be a part of your son slash daughter's life because you never know where they could be. They could be representing the country. Be a part of their life. Whether they were part of your plans immediately or not, they're a blessing from God. So please be a part of their life. You know, Remy Street, he, when he was at Newcastle United, he wanted to play for Jamaica, especially that under-17 FIFA World Cup in 2011. But he didn't have a relationship with his father, who was Floyd Street. So that was a situation there. And again, I want all parents, because it's no surprise that children who are successful have great moral support from their parents. It's no surprise, it's no coincidence, it's no secret that children who are successful in their endeavors is as a result of the moral support from the parents. No surprise whatsoever. Absolutely no surprise at all. So let's go back to Archie. Archie Brown, Archibald Brown, is 20 years old and he'll be 21 in May. At the end of May, he's going to be 21. He will be coming to Jamaica in June. At that point in time, it's about citizenship and passport. So, I hope you guys understood exactly what I said. If you had any questions or queries about what I said the past 23 minutes or so, please go ahead and let me know, okay? Please go ahead and let me know. I look forward to see if any questions you have amongst in this nature, if there's something that you're unclear about, if there was a topic or or something that I said in terms of the process. Did I speak too fast? But hopefully that sort of narrowed things down for you in relation to Archie specifically and his defensive responsibilities. But just to give you a little bit more details in relation to, to Archie Brown. Archie, he's very strong with headers, both defensively and defensively. He is very good with the ball at his feet. An aspect of his game that I would like to see improved is defending at the halfway line. Defending deep by the box, no problem at all. I think once you can be able to master defending at the halfway line, playing a high line, I'd love that. I'd absolutely love that. And 
any center half can tell you or anybody with a history of playing center half can tell you playing or defending at the halfway line defending playing a high defensive line it's not an easy craft you have to be aware of so much different variables in front of you <clears throat> and also the opposition players that might be playing on your shoulder so that is something that will come in time he's been a professional football player for two seasons now and it's something that he will continue to grow and learn it. he went to the second team the Lausanne sports second team and he showed his worth there with a couple of games and a goal into the first team squad now and Lausanne sports are on the cusp of promotion there are five games left in the season five games left in the season And four wins from those remaining five games play a massive role in ensuring that they get promoted to top flight next season. There are some good players there, very good players at the club. Specifically, you can think about Raphael Spiegel, the former West Ham United goalkeeper, six foot five and a half, was part of the Swiss team that won the under 17. FIFA World Cup in 2009 when they defeated Nigeria by a goal to nil. You can think about Trey Coyle as well. Trey Coyle, 22, formerly of Arsenal, formerly as well of Gillingham as well. So there are quality players in and around system. Great individuals. Talented disciplined so that's what I want to say here he plays for Lausanne Sport and Lausanne Sport currently plays in the Swiss Challenge League the Swiss Challenge League is the second tier of Swiss football the top flight of Swiss football is called the Swiss Super League. So hopefully that helps you to narrow things down. Okay. Did that answered your question there. Siobhan Brown, don't worry. Because every little thing will be all right. <laughs> no, this evening, this evening, Eddie Guna. No, this evening. <laughs> all right, fine. You did miss one. I didn't sing it. I just said it, if you understand what I mean. So there's one. No, it wasn't Massacre, it was Alkaline. So no, to answer your question, no, I did not sing any Massacre songs. It was an Alkaline song. So not too far. The apple didn't fall too far from the tree in terms of the genre, right? Chris Reed says, blessings, Simon's blessings, Chris Reed. How are you doing? I hope you are doing well. How are things? If you guys haven't already, please hit the like button. And after you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to Reggae Boys Commentary, okay? For more content. Would really appreciate that. Okay? So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing more from you guys in relation to all of this. How does that sound? Sounds good? Well, if you guys haven't already, I implore you to check out the video that was done earlier today in relation to Jamaicans who will be involved in playoffs. And that's in relation to the championship, League One, and League Two. Now, in relation to the championship itself, Amari Bell is going to be in the championship playoff with Luton Town. So you know what that means? That means that we could have a regu another reggae boy in the Premier League next season. Amari Bell could be a Premier League player next season. Who else? Well, if you look at the championship playoffs in particular, Middlesbrough also have a chance as well. When you're bearing in mind that Michael Carrick has put his troops together, but I know you're thinking, okay, 
George Grant has a Jamaican passport. And not only George Grant has, well, George Grant Jr. has a Jamaican passport. In terms of eligibility, there are other players you know that you have Aaron Ramsey there and you have Cameron Archer there in terms of eligibility. League One playoffs, Sheffield Wednesday, are there. And that's Darren Moore's Blue and White Army, led by Marvin Johnson and Jaden Brown. In the League Two playoffs, we have Adrian Joseph Mariapa. So there will be Jamaican involvement within the playoffs. The good news is all of the, the playoff final itself will be in the month of May. So it would not carry over into June, which is the Gold Cup. The only thing that that carries over into June that may that that would possibly have a Jamaican involvement is the UEFA Europa Conference League final. And Mikel Antonio and West Ham United have the ability to advance to the UEFA Europa Conference League final. So in relation to what lies ahead for Mikel Antonio, on Thursday, May 11, West Ham host Azad Alkmaar. And then the second leg will be in, in Holland. In the other semi-final, Fiorentina out of Serie A will face FC Basel of Switzerland. Now, this is fantastic when you're bearing in mind that in back-to-back years, Mikel Antonio and West Ham United went to a Europa League semi-final and now a Europa Conference League semi-final. Back-to-back years, semi-finals in European competition. The fans must be excited to have this European journey with them must be absolutely thrilled and to have one of our own in Mikel Antonio competing in European competition as well. I am pleasantly pleased, happy, thrilled, elated when Jamaicans are involved in European competition, whether it is the Europa Conference League, whether it is the Europa League, whether it is the Champions League. I am grateful and love to see all Jamaicans involved. And guess what? We'll have the opportunity as well to see two Jamaicans in the CONCACAF Champions League semi-final in the second leg. Yep, that's right. In the second leg, we will also see that as well. As this coming Tuesday, Los Angeles FC will face Philadelphia Union in, se- in the second leg of the semi-finals. The first leg ended 1-1 in Philly and the second leg in LA. We await to see. And of course, the winner will face Club Leon or Tigres. And the final itself will be two legs as well. The final will be two legs. The first leg on May 31st. So we could have a lot more to celebrate about in terms of Jamaicans and their club assignments. We're, we're happy for Greg Lee for winning the UEFA, well, for winning, for being promoted from League One to the Championship. We're extremely happy about that. We're also happy for Tiffany Cameron as well for winning the Hungarian Cup three times in a row. The first player to win the Hungarian Cup three times in a row. Massive applause for Tiffany Cameron for winning that trophy three times in a row. And also, the numbers don't lie. When you bear in mind 16 goals and 12 assists in 15 appearances this campaign, that's 22 goal contributions in 15 games. That tells you that she's having almost two goal contributions per game. When you're providing almost two con- goal contributions per game, that's absolutely lethal. So a forward for club and for country, a right back. <laughs> you see what I'm saying there? So outstanding. Very much so, isn't it? Yankee Graham, everything is time. Everything is just a matter of time, okay? Everything is just a matter of time. So... It's going to require patience. It will. Star boys, how are you? I hope you're doing well, my friend. How are things? All is well? To catch you up on things, sir, star boys, uses Philly. We have some Jamaicans that are slated to be involved in the, the playoffs. So in the, the championship, we have Amari Bell, potentially even 
Casey Palmer in League One. If Johnson Clark Harris does his thing and gets Peterborough into the top six, then he could be in the in the playoffs. And League Two of Adrian Joseph Mariapa. So which means that we could have Jamaicans being promoted from League Two to League One, League One to the Championship, and from the Championship to the Premier League. We could have a triple treat with Jamaicans getting promoted to the the next tier above them. Isn't that fantastic? Very much so. And we should all be delighted with that. Shouldn't we? Absolutely. And that is something to truly embrace. I remember 2009 seeing Nicholas Adlery and the Puerto Rico Islanders in the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions League. And it was a penalty shootout, you know, a penalty shootout that denied him from a spot in the final. So, yes, Nicholas Adlery, a Jamaican, was in the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions League. Ryan Johnson, another Jamaican that was in the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions League. Andy Williams was in the final. Andy Williams was in the final of the CONCACAF Champions League. Yeah. Serious. Seriously. How does that sound? Do you know who's the first Jamaican to win a European league? Deva Orgil, IFK Mariam. All right. I'm going to show you guys something cool. Ask any question, any Reggae Boys trivia, and I'll answer it without putting my hands on the keyboard or going to going to Google on my phone or, or anything. Because I have some information in here. So, so watch this now. I'm going to say all of Jamaica's results in Gold Cup history. Okay? All of Jamaica's results in Gold Cup history without lifting my hand or going and researching it. All of Jamaica's scorelines. Jamaica's first game in Gold Cup history was against Mexico. That match ended 4-1 to Mexico. Honduras, 5. Jamaica, nil. Canada, 3. Jamaica, 2. 1993, Gold Cup, now USA, 1. Jamaica, nil. Jamaica, 3. Honduras, 1. Jamaica, 3. Honduras, 1. Yep. Panama, 1. Jamaica, 1. Semifinals, Mexico, 6. Jamaica, 1. Third place playoff, Jamaica, 1. Costa Rica, 1. Come on, Fitzroy. That's Keith Kelly. So we go to the 1998 edition of the Gold Cup now. Jamaica nil, Brazil nil. Jamaica three, Guatemala two. Jamaica two, El Salvador nil. Mexico one, Jamaica nil. Brazil one, Jamaica nil. We go to the 2000 Gold Cup now. Colombia one, Jamaica nil. Honduras two, Jamaica nil. We now go to 2003. Honduras one, rather Colombia one, Jamaica nil. Jamaica two, Guatemala nil. Mexico Cinco, Jamaica Zero. 2005 Gold Cup now. Jamaica Four, Guatemala Three. Jamaica Three, South Africa Three. Mexico Uno, Jamaica Zero. USA Three, Jamaica One. We now go to 2009. Canada One, Jamaica. Costa Rica One, Jamaica. Jamaica El Salvador Nil. Let's go to 2011 now. Jamaica Four, Grenada Nil. Jamaica Two, Guatemala nil, Jamaica one, Honduras nil. Quarterfinals, USA two, Jamaica nil. Let's go to 2015, shall we? In 2015, it was Jamaica two, Costa Rica two. It was also Jamaica one, Canada nil. It was also Jamaica one, El Salvador nil. It was also Jamaica one, Haiti nil. It was also Jamaica two, USA one. And it was also Jamaica one, Mexico three. In 2017, Jamaica beat Curacao 2-0. They had a 0-0 draw against Mexico, a 1-1 draw against El Salvador. Quarterfinals beat Canada 2-1. In the semifinals, it was a 1-0 victory over the Mexicans. And in the final itself, the United States 2, Jamaica 1. 2019 now, Jamaica 3, Honduras 2. Yeah. El Salvador 0, Jamaica 0. Curacao 1, Jamaica 1. Quarterfinals, Jamaica 1, Panama 0. Semifinals, Jamaica 1, USA 3. Let's go to 2021. 
2021. Jamaica 2, Suriname. Jamaica 2, Guadalupe. Costa Rica 1, Jamaica 0. Estados Unidos, Jamaica. And there, I've just given you the results of all of Jamaica's games in Gold Cup history without using Google, without using any search engine at all, and speaking out of my head right here. If you guys want to go back to 1925, more than happy to do that. If you guys want to go back to World Cup qualifying, happy to give you the results as well. So, there we go. <laughs> Thank you for your encouragement. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to keep working hard and trust that everything will fall into place. Thank you. I appreciate it. We can even go to Caribbean Cup if you guys want. Jamaica's Caribbean Cup titles, 1991, 1998, 2005, 2008, 2010, 2014. Jamaica has only ever lost two penalty shootouts at the senior level. When did they come? 1993 against Martinique and 1997 against Trinidad and Tobago. Jamaica's victories in penalty shootouts. We could go back to the Lunar New Year Cup in 2007. We could go to the Caribbean Cup in 2014, the final. We could go back to the Caribbean Cup final 2010. And we can even go to the Caribbean Cup final, Caribbean Cup semifinals in 2017 of Jamaica's victories in penalty shootouts. El Jefe Entertainment, hope you're doing well, sir. If you guys haven't already, please, I encourage you to hit the like button. So you guys... Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Reggae Boys fans, thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please have a pleasant, pleasant rest of your evening. Have a pleasant rest of your evening. And I want you to map out the summer that lies ahead. How can I find my way to Chicago? How can I find my way to Missouri? How can I find my way to California? How can I find my way to Cincinnati? How can I find my way to San Diego? How can I find my way to Inglewood? Pienso. Si. Claro. Agreed. All right, guys. Be safe. Okay? Everything falls into place in time. Speak soon, guys. Okay? subscribe button. See you guys later. This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876 586 0471. That's 876 
586-0471. This video is brought to you by Starboy's Juices, infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Refreshing and nutritious. Call Starboys at 1267 904 3454. That's 1267 904 3454. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. Football, cricket, athletics, netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sports City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sports City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sports City right now.